Those of you that missed it, I am John Everblessed. This is the Sun Cure, restoring the lost art of light as medicine. And we've just now started. Here we go. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. So good, in fact, that God placed Adam and Eve in a garden in the sunlight all day, every day, naked to prove it to us cannot possibly receive a stronger endorsement for sunlight than what he demonstrated for us in the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> Eden was God's showcase for that ideal lifestyle for health and healing. Yet, the so-called medical science that God's sunlight causes disease tenaciously persists. Therefore, <clears throat> We will let the stories of history provide the evidence to vindicate God when he says that sunlight is good. Since God's word is never wrong, we would expect history to show a pattern of health and recovery associated with sunlight and a pattern of disease and death associated with its absence, right? <clears throat> now, the best place to start looking for such a pattern is in the history of the war on tuberculosis. Because sunlight and fresh air were the two primary countermeasures for tuberculosis. <clears throat> and who better to tell what sunlight can really do for our health than the pioneer men of science, those physicians who wielded it daily in the treatment of countless patients worldwide. Their medical expertise in light therapeutics are unequaled in this generation, as to be no comparison at all. Their knowledge represents lifetimes of practical, hands-on, in-the-trenches, life-and-death, battle-scarred experience. In the context of the Bible and these amazing pioneer practitioners of heliotherapy, today's merchants of pharmacia simply embarrass themselves when they proclaim that God's sunlight causes disease. Even the Bible has a warning to them. Woe unto them who call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. <clears throat> Yet even still, some natural providers are still accusing God's sunlight of causing cancer. It's the same thing as calling God a liar, for God pronounced sunlight good. All right, back to TB. <clears throat> tuberculosis, was, tuberculosis was known as the Great White Plague, the White Death and Consumption. It was highly infectious and was considered one of the deadliest diseases in human history. During late, the late 19th century, tuberculosis accounted for about 20% of all deaths. And TB is still an active disease around the world. <clears throat> now, unlike other plagues, tuberculosis did not make a sudden appearance, devastate a population, and quickly die off. No. Instead, it infected a person over a period of years or decades through alternating cycles of sharp attacks and remissions. <clears throat> Throughout history, sufferers are characterized as feverish, dehydrated, and afflicted by strong bouts of coughing, which left them fighting for breath. Their bodies became emaciated, lethargic, and pale white, earning the disease the name the Great White Plague. TB is a con highly contagious disease that is transmitted through infected droplets from a sneeze, cough, or simply from talking. It is most commonly known for affecting the lungs, but it could also invade and destroy muscles, joints, bones, organs, and skin. And I got lots of pictures of that, before and after as well. <clears throat> okay, now the war on consumption finally organized. In the latter part of the 19th century, States, nations finally began to work together to eradicate TB. 
The war on TB organized to find its cause, its treatment, and its prevention. They finally discovered that TB thrived within the poverty-stricken city dwellers living in close quarters, unsanitary conditions, and deficient in healthy food, fresh air, and sunlight. <clears throat> The organized war on TB found that sunlight and open air living and open air living both reversed and prevented TB as well as many other diseases. <clears throat> they began to educate, 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 which is what we should be doing too uh, with our health message, right? Traveling health exhibits, health posters, conventions, exhibitions, parade floats, etc. Over time, this organized movement produced all kinds of interesting options to get people into the fresh air and sunlight. <clears throat> Number one, and I've got 22 of them here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Open air TB sanitariums. This one's in California. It's called Weimar. This, the buildings at this California facility tended to have lots of windows that opened wide for fresh air and sunlight. Uh, currently, this facility is used as a lifestyle health recovery center by Adventists. The following historical images that I'm going to show you, the images and the stories, will be showing us God's escape route away from pharmaceuticals, supplements, and sometimes even surgeries that we're told, you must have this surgery. Not necessarily true, folks. God's healing methods are amazing, and you're going to start, start to hear it. All right. Here are those interesting options to get fresh air and sunlight. Number two, open air TB tent colonies. This one was in New York. Patients with infectious diseases and not just TB tended to recover much faster with far fewer deaths in sunlight and open air tent colonies than inside hospitals. This one was in the mountains of New York state. These were found all over the world, including the Battle Creek Sanitarium. What you see here is affordable ideal healthy housing for treating infectious patients. Here's a practical application uh, for these end times. If God has blessed you, the listener, with property and means, what you see here could start out as a an open air, as one open air tent for sleeping in at night. And I'm just about to do that myself. Or a simple close to nature lifestyle. Perhaps it, perhaps it could be used as your own home sanitarium for treating your family and neighbors. Or it might start off as a self-supporting, glamorous camping or glamping or an Airbnb or maybe a health vacation. Eventually, such an encampment can be used as an open-air sanitarium, eventually becoming an outpost center like we were told to create and a refuge for the persecuted with industries. Maybe these sorts of encampments can become outdoor healing modules at existing lifestyle centers. We'll see. <clears throat> now this outdoor treatment and living is what we should have been doing during the weaponized COVID wars. Since we know that there will be more such attacks, this is one method to prepare for it. The ongoing poisoning and culling of mankind is going to push us back to God's original outdoor health care plan, because that's where real prevention and cure reside, right? Now, such encampments can demonstrate the ideal lifestyle for health and healing, just like the Garden of Eden did. All right, number three, preventoriums for children at high risk for TB. So at-risk children were taken from their homes and placed into preventoriums to strengthen their immune system to prevent TB, thus preventoriums. Sunlight, fresh air, exercise, rest, a healthy diet, it all worked, just like we were told it would work, right? These were worldwide. This one is in France. Number four, light institutes uh, all over the world. This one happens to be in England. They're uh, tapping into sunlight through those pipes. And they use artificial light as well. Number five, light departments. This one was at the Battle Creek Sanitarium. 
This is also at the Battle Creek Sanitarium, indoor artificial sun baths. This was before tanning beds. They used welding rods tuned medically to have the right balance between ultraviolet light and heat. <clears throat> also at the Battle Creek Sanitarium, number seven, indoor window sunbathing. Now that doesn't work with just any windows. They installed ultraviolet transmitting glass. In other words, ultraviolet light will go right through that glass and won't be filtered out like our typical glass is. It was called Vita glass at the time. Now the next slide is one of my favorites here. Number eight, sunbathing pavilions with UV transmitting glass. And notice all the wide open windows there. What a fabulous facility. I think I could make a lot of money if I had one of those. All right, now, now that building is an ideal building for indoor sunbathing. Now, common window glass blocks about 86% of UV, and that's just single pane, untinted window glass. Number nine, rotating sunbathing huts. Now, this hut could be turned to follow the sun, and it could block the cold wind if desired. This one is on the roof of a children's hospital in England. Number 10, open air sleeping rooms or porches. This one was at the Battle Creek. Open air sleeping rooms such as this were available to patients at the Battle Creek Sanitarium if they could be induced to use them. Open air tents were also an option for patients. They were requirements, however, for patients with infectious diseases such as TB. Um, Number 11, backyard open air isolation tents. This one is in Toronto, Canada. Look how simple an open air dwelling can be. <clears throat> Number 12, fresh air window tubes. The point is that you get to breathe cool, fresh air, but the rest of you could stay warm. Just like this next one here. Number 13, window tents, same principle. Number 14, supervised sunshine playground. Isn't that an interesting idea? This was on Dr. Kellogg's property next to the Battle Creek Sanitarium. That building there is called the Sunshine Center. They are standing in the sunshine playground. This was on Dr. Kellogg's property. It was a preventor. It was a preventorium in the form of a playground. All right, so modern applications for us might be Wellness day camps, wellness summer camps for children, families, and adults. Children here were medically examined and monitored uh, and treated as needed. This was in Battle Creek. I love that picture. <clears throat> Health classes were offered. Uh, agriculture training was offered. They were given uh, sunbathing and swimming time. This is for, these are the guys. See, there's a swimming pool back there and a little wading pool there in front. Uh, there was one for girls as well. Dr. Kellogg created the playground for his own children. But when they grew up, he called this, this the Sunshine Playground and opened it up for the use and health of the entire neighborhood, all the children. It was the most popular playground in all of Battle Creek. No one else was doing this on planet Earth. Uh, I need to stay, take a moment here and, and re-explain that these are many of these are practical options that we may need to implement as the world spins out of control. We may not even have a choice. <clears throat> now, what you see here, this wasn't just teaching children the theories of good health practices. It was good health practices. I'm really not sure what they're doing because I don't see anything on their plates, and at least not anything discernible. But this is uh, one that came with it, didn't have any explanation. This is the deer park connected with it on Dr. Kellogg's property. Dr. Kellogg said small children ought to wear as little as possible in the summer season so as to allow their bodies to become well browned in contact with the sun and air. When that's not possible, when that's not practical, he recommended that they wear thin white clothing instead because the sun uh, penetrates it better without distortion of color. Practical skills were offered, 
this was a service that also kept them there longer in the open air and sunlight. That was the point. Apparently, they had a reading time in the Sunshine Playground. <clears throat> Number 15, this is one of my favorites here. Uh, beach solariums for sunbathing in private. Men were separated from women. Notice the very high wall there. Uh, <clears throat> this is a very practical and important option. These places places posted words like curative and life-giving. Giving. They were familiar with the true nature of sunlight, unlike this generation. They were also familiar with modesty in mixed company. Yes, folks, there was a time when our society knew how to blush. The whole area was surrounded by a tall brick wall. This one was run by the municipality of St. Petersburg, Florida. This photo is from the 1930s. Number 16, same sort of uh, scenario here, open air gymnasiums with privacy fencing. This was at the Battle Creek Sanitarium, one for men, one for women. <clears throat> Notice how tall those fences are. They had barbed wire up higher and they had chain leak fences about three feet away from the actual fences on the outside. They, were, they made sure it was private. Now, the Battle Creek Sanitarium was the greatest hygienic healthcare institution that has ever been. It was the largest and most well-equipped. It had the greatest physician in our world, according to Ellen White. It was raised up at God's command, had over a thousand baths and therapies, yet sunlight was considered to be one of their most effective treatments. How's that? That tells you something. All right, they had useful labor and hot sand baths uh, available there inside the outdoor gymnasium. I think this one was just a pose. They just post posed this. They had physical activities, horseshoes, it looks like, and sunbathing and group exercises for both men and women. And there's a big old pool down there as well. Here's a part of that was an outdoor mechanical gym for passive exercise. <clears throat> This is the, one of their outdoor pools. Number 17, indoor sunbathing beaches with artificial sunlight. This is either in Belgium or France. I couldn't quite, wasn't quite clear. What an interesting idea. This one's my favorite. Indoor sunbathing cafe and juice bar. This is in the state of New Jersey in America. It was on top of a skyscraper. Sun lamps, heat lamps, and skylights, probably Vita glass windows. It was a juice bar. They served ice cream and amazing view. And you notice the medical attendants on duty, yeah, both male and female. I believe that these were nurses. I have another picture like this where it shows, yeah, she has a nurse's cap on. Number 19, open air ferries at TB camps. This one is in New York. Notice the Brooklyn Bridge there. Number 20, open air schools. There were all sorts of different types of open air schools. This one, wow, how would you like to go to this one? Was on the beach. For recess, they went playing in the ocean. What an amazing idea. Now, open air schools became a worldwide practice. The results were fabulous. And we desperately need to get back to this kind of thinking. Having an open air school at the beach offered the added benefits Due, the, due to the constantly moving water, which generated healing negative ions, plus the minerals in there. And these children are grounded as well, bare feet. So, uh, all right, next one. 21, children's open air health camp. This one is in Los Angeles, California. They both slept and, and ate in tents. 22, they even had open air school buses. This one was from Brooklyn, New York, United States. Now, but of all these options for getting sunlight and fresh air, one provider stood out high above them all. Now we're about to get into the meat of this thing. This was just the fluff so far. Dr. Augusta Rollier. He had 36 sun cure clinics in the town of Laysen, Switzerland. 
Now, Dr. Kellogg had two extended stays here to learn heliotherapy from this undisputed disputed master of heliotherapy. Dr. Kellogg was the director of the, doc, of the Battle Creek Sanitarium. <clears throat> Dr. Rollier opened his first high altitude TB clinic in 1903 in the Swiss Alps. He specialized in surgical TB. That means TB who is the tuberculosis was drilling holes and tunnels in their bodies and distorting it. That's what it means by surgical TB. And he called this program the Sun Cure or La Cure du Soleil. I don't know if I said that right. Who knows? All right. <clears throat> Eventually, Dr. Rollier had 36 Sun Cure clinics in and around this town. What a beautiful place to live. Any space that could be found. This particular clinic is on top of a tiny strip mall in the village. The principal... We use whatever God has placed in our hands. Now we get into the disease process here. Uh, this one is from the book Facts About Artificial Sunlight. This image is from a sun cure clinic in Germany, not, Lace, not Laysen. I use it here because this one image portrays the scope of the TB crisis very well. So the following quote is from a doctor in 1927, and he describes the reality at Laysen. Here's the quote. I'm going to read it. <clears throat> Many of the results obtained at Laysen in the cure of TB and other persistent disorders of health have been little short of miraculous. I believe that. Terrible ulcerations, debilitating abscesses, and nerve-destroying weakness have vanished under the magic of the sun's rays, scientifically applied. Spines softened by tuberculosis so that they were of no more use for support than had they been made of putty have been made whole. Disorganized joints and limbs distorted in apparently hopeless confusion of natural function have been made straight assisted by physicians with splints as well, lungs so rotten with tubercle that they had burst through the chest wall itself, have healed, and the terrible wounds resulting have closed up. Little children crippled and carious have been made strong. Carious means teeth and bones crumbling away but they have been made strong under the sun. Whilst in other forms, consumption has yielded to the sun cure. <clears throat> All right, here we go. The treatment was slow, but extremely effective. The sun cure had an 84% cure rate on dreadful surgical TB. Patients who were close to death this was accomplished without the expected maiming risky surgeries of the day. Now, Dr. Rollier did this in an era when TB was still considered incurable by mainstream medicine. <clears throat> he used only the healing agencies of nature. Now, even with these kinds of provable public results, the sun cure was still vehemently resisted by mainstream allopathic practitioners and their fraternities. And today, there's no such thing as cure rates with mainstream medical practitioners, only lifelong management of the symptoms, while the drugs continue to add to the burden of their poisoned bodies. <clears throat> Not a few of these patients were confined to bed for months on end. Seriously? Conditions like spondylitis, inflamed spine, and or ankylosis, stiff or, or fused joints, required complete immobilization, some requiring traction, splints, or casts. Huh. Heliotherapy, 1927. <clears throat> Patients were rolled into the sun for daily regulated sunbathing. Dr. Rollier found that morning sunlight was best, especially for beginners. He found that if patients' sun therapy was done in the heat of the day, that it caused a physically 
depressing effect. So early morning heliotherapy, sun therapy, was very effective, even though there wasn't as much ultraviolet light in the morning. They postulated that the success was partially attributable to the patient's immediate change from night to bright morning sunlight. Again, there are more curative aspects to sunlight than just UV. <clears throat> Dr. Rolier's primary healing agents were sunlight, open air, and rest. Ovaltine was not one of their healing remedies. You see that child with it there. But he did find that he could speed healing by adding three more things. You can probably guess what at least one of these is. Number one, the work cure. He says, we have organized manual work for the tedious hours of treatment. These occupations can be carried out even during the periods of cure with the necessary graduation and moderation and far from causing any fatigue for the patients, they constitute on the contrary, a salutary diversion which revives their spirits and favors the progress of their cure. It would be a great mistake to lose sight of the influence of illness on the mind of the patient and not to take care of each one's psycho-physical equilibrium. That makes sense. He continues, with patients, even bedridden, who are more than any other liable to get discouraged, the work cure is not only an incomparable stimulant of the moral condition, it's also a first-rate factor in recovery. See, it wasn't just exercise or work. It was useful labor. Or I have two applications for this, spiritual applications. Number one, patients did not wait until they were cured to start working. They found that work was part of the cure. So too, working for the good of others is part of our cure from sin and selfishness. If we wait till we are free from the disease of sin, we will never work for others. Working for others is part of the cure for sin. Application number two, like this image, you are going to see more photos which may give you ideas for setting up industries at your health facilities to increase the patient's physical, mental, and spiritual health. It enabled the Laysan patients to help pay their own way. There were far more industries at these clinics than I have room or time to present to you. I have lots of pictures of it. Play also had a healing effect. Number two, the social cure also sped up healing. Dr. Fol Rollier found that when patients shared the same space, they recovered even faster. <clears throat> Social interaction helps to divert our minds from ourselves onto others. This image shows that it was combined with the work cure. And I personally have found an immense, by immense personal experience, when I focused on my sickness, I got sicker. So too, when I focus on my sinfulness, I get more sinful. Our focus and trust is to be on Christ, the great physician. I found that during my year and a half of sickness, the only time I felt relieved of my symptoms totally was at our weekly church potlucks when I got to socialize. Church didn't work. I got worse at church because I felt trapped because I was sick. And I, well, what if I didn't just feel sick and I got to leave? Well, so anyway. Number three, a mostly vegetarian diet also helped speed their cure. This was also part of the work cure for patients and or students did the gardening themselves. All right, before and after, with and without. All right, here we are. We have arrived at the meat. <clears throat> Surgical and lung tuberculosis. Now, Dr. Rullier asserted that he could cure all forms of TB, any stage, any age, even though immobilized for many months in bed, his patients had good appetites, noticeably strengthened and toned muscles? Really? Increasing hemoglobin, 
content, diminished pain, and sometimes totally relieved pain. And these people were in severe pain. Swellings, infiltrations, and edema also disappear in TB lesions or bones and joints. Now here comes the proof. What you are going to see is just a small, tiny little fraction of what sunlight can really do. <clears throat> Oops. Hold on just a second. <laughs> oh, I got something out of order. I did. I need to read this one little thing here. Muscles without exercise. Yet today when patients are on bed rest indoors just a few days, muscles begin to atrophy and weaken. Think of the implications for our patients and families if we treat them outdoors in the sunlight and fresh air. You will also begin to see how many drugs may be avoided by using God's healing agencies. We don't know any of this in this age of pharmacia. We can do so much better than drugs. God has given us such powerful healing agents at our command. Agencies that God himself blesses with supernatural results as we use them. All right, now here's the first, first case study. This little guy, he's four and a half years old, he had advanced TB, both feet, right hand and left lung, lungs. Doctor considered amputating both legs and right hand. He had 34 TB spots on his body or 34 TB foci. He had weakness and wasting of the body, inflamed or enlarged bones, inflamed bone membranes, inflamed inner wall of ab abdomen and pelvis, inflamed glands or lymph nodes, very large lymph nodes, and numerous abnormal body tunnels from the TB. All right, he's four and a half. Now, one year later, all those issues cured in one year at Dr. Roller's Sun Care Clinics. The disease was stopped and the body healed, but TB had caused anatomical damage that could not be fully reversed. Had this patient been sent to the Sun Care Clinics early on, that damage could have been prevented. That was the value of preventoriums to prevent TB from arising in the first place. Same guy, and that's him later the, with, in the next picture. Same guy, two and a half years after his arrival. Look at him. Man. Dr. Rollier said, gardening and farming are suitable for convalescent lung and bone cases more than any other kinds of work. They all get so hardened by open air and sunlight that their muscles get so wonderfully developed and such a high degree of resistance is achieved on their part that they are envied by many a low country laborer. Resistance to both disease and weather changes is what they're saying. Now that second picture, that is healthcare done right. That is God's health care. That's what God intended for us to be, our health care. <clears throat> the air and sun bath is the most powerful of all tonics and hair health restorers. Wow, you never hear a doctor say that now, do you? Now, this is from Dr. Rollier. He knows. It rebuilds the organism and increases its vitality. Children strengthened during the summer months by air and sun baths are hardier and can much better withstand all the illnesses that may affect them during the winter. The same applies to adults, he says. In fact, the general health of Dr. Rollier's patients proved quite remarkable. Here's the quote. Visitors often commented on the lack of coughs and colds among children who were so exposed. This guy here, he arrived with 42 open spots of TB. The B, after eight months of sun cure. C, after 13 years and retraining in the agricultural labor. He never went back to the cities. Do you know why I'm showing the patient's progress even years after they finished the sun cure? And I've got more to show you because it demonstrates that sun cure patients never developed cancer from spending so much time in the sunlight. More time and more skin exposure than anyone. 
these patients proved that cancer is not caused by sunlight. And I have a follow-up. The next uh, the next video or presentation I give here, uh, it's going to prove that. It's called Cancer and God's Healing Sunlight. I, I take that on. Okay. It is important that the convalescents should not return directly into the debilitating atmosphere of cities. You remember, we're told to get out of the cities. There's reasons for that. There's health reasons right now. All right. With this in view, we started, this is Dr. Rollier talking. With this in view, we started 23 years ago, the working colony of Laysan, and since then, an agricultural colony at Cernier. In both establishments, all patients completely cured, gradually recover during several months, the habit of working under usual conditions. So, all right, the working colonies and the agricultural colonies could possibly be the most practical application of our health message we could ever come up with. This is the healthcare that God intended. Living and working outdoors is God's healthcare system. All clinics with children had an open air school. And they actually, Dr. Rolier actually started a school called the School in the Sun. It acted like a preventorium. You didn't have to be sick to be there. Hats were for newcomers, not yet accustomed to sunlight. And when one simply had enough sunlight for the day, it prevented headaches, overheating, and possible nausea as a result of overheating or too much UV when you're not yet used to it, et cetera. This is what the girls wore. Morning exercise was hiking up a mountain to school with desktop and chair on back. How's that? That's pretty fun. This one is my favorite here. This is their free time. You notice most of those kids are holding flowers. I think it would, might have been their daily task, or at least that morning's task. There is a St. Bernard, a horse, a, uh, and a couple of mules there. All right. <clears throat> this one is also my favorite. The Sun Cure and Clinique Manufacture. This is a Sun Cure clinic that was also a factory. Now that is a practical application of health reform. Wouldn't that be something to combine health recovery with an industry? Well, no one ever does that. Weren't we told of the need in the end times of having housing and industry available for those needing to get out of the cities and for the persecuted? Yeah. All right, next case study. This guy cured in six months. Most of these things are the same sorts of things. They got different names, different symptoms, lots and lots, but it's all the same soup. The same patient there 15 years later. No cancer whatsoever after 15 years. This lady had a different set of symptoms here too. And here she is 14 years after the sun cure. She was cured in one year. This patient came back and worked as a nurse in the sun care clinic. Arthritis deformants, Dr. Rollier speaking, this has yielded repeatedly to heliotherapy. Synovial effusions or excess synovial fluid in a joint and spontaneous attacks of pain disappear or else become lessened as also do the swellings of articular bone ends creaking of joints, muscular atrophy, atrophy, shrinking, and neurological pains, pain radiating along a nerve. I've not yet found before and after images of arthritis deformance in Dr. Rollier's book, which is unfortunate. He says it works, but whether they actually return to their uh, original anatomical um, shape, I never heard him address that. War wounds. In the domain of war surgery, the sun renders immense service. We have observed among the soldiers interned at Laysan that after a few weeks of heliotherapeutics, penetrating wounds that had been superating or weeping pus for 18 months and more dried up. The healing of indolent and recalcitrant sores or slow to heal sores 
the disappearance of inflammatory residues and swelling, the development of muscles and the recovery of movement in joints that had until then been stiffened or fused, ankylosed, were also seen. That's big stuff there. I mean, that is really, really significant. We're going to address that in just a bit, too. Bone fractures. This is Dr. Rillier. The favorable influence of the sun in cases of fractures has been well known for a long time. We're going to need to know this when, we, when every human uh, support has been removed. This is practical. Thus, Percy, he was a scientist, noticed that fractures in patients who lay in a secluded corner of the ward where sunlight never reached united very slowly. But consolidation or healing of the broken bones took a normal length of time as soon as these cases were moved to the sunny parts of the ward. Did any of us know that? Did any doctor ever tell you that sunlight can help heal bones? All right, chronic joint and bone disease. This is John Harvey Kellogg talking. He says, the writer, John Harvey Kellogg, saw at Laysen, Switzerland, and at Burke Plage, France, hundreds of cases of chronic joint and bone disease of a most advanced and aggravated character that were making admirable progress toward recovery, and scores of cases were seen in which recovery from apparently hopeless conditions was apparently complete and without material impairment of function. That's really good. Okay. Syphilitic tumors healed within three months of heliotherapy in Laysen. A guma there is a soft tumor-like growth of the tissues that occurs in people with syphilis. Now this next picture is pretty darn bad. Okay, osteomyelitis of tibia after opening. Healed and epithelialized in six months. That thing was healed in six months? Wow. Now, osteomyelitis is a serious infection of the bone that can be either acute or chronic. So how do you expose this to sunlight without getting bugs inside of it? Because bugs are drawn to that, right? Wire netting was used on wounds instead of bandages to allow sun and air to speed the healing. No bugs allowed. Very simple. Someone needs to start remanufacturing those. This is an exceeding practical thing to know. This gal, well, I need to read what she had. Spine TB, dorsal pain, that means back pain, very active with early paraplegia and gibbocytis. The dorsal means the back, paraplegia means paralysis of the legs and lower body, typically caused by spinal injury or disease. In this case, it was disease. Gibbocytis means a bunching out, most commonly of the back. Now, while Dr. Roller is saying that sunlight cured a paralyzed patient, it wasn't as marvelous as it first sounds. It was not a severed spinal cord, rather a disease process that hindered its function. And this lady girl was restored in 18 months. You notice she had to have, she had to be held up because her spine was so weak and mushy. This girl here is the same sort of thing, slightly different. 1.5 years of sun cure, complete cure with full mechanical correction of kyphosis without the use of plaster jackets. Now, this one was a failure. Uh, this first image, two and a half years of sun lamp treatment to right cheek alone failed to cure lupus. By the way, this is not, this one is not at the Sun Cure Clinic. It was at a, a Finson's place, I believe. They used uh, artificial sunlight. Now, lupus vulgaris is a form or manifestation of TB. Now, why would I put this failure in this presentation? because it's going to lead to a general healing principle concerning the proper use of sunlight. Mm. There she is. It was cured in six months, however, when full body exposure to sunlight was, to sun lamp was added. The principle here, sunlight's greatest benefit comes systemically. Therefore, full body exposure is far far more beneficial than just targeting a specific 
point on the body. Uh, by the way, I believe the cure would have been uh, faster still had they used natural sunlight. You remember Adam and Eve in a garden, in the sunlight, all day, every day, naked. 15 minutes of sunlight a day to the hands and face is not a therapeutic level. Sunlight is not actually a therapy. It is a vital, basic human requirement to function and prevent and reverse disease. We need all we can get, whether we are sick or healthy. You can probably guess what the merchants of Pharmacaea say about lupus, right? <clears throat> Here we have the evidence that sunlight fixes it. But Pharmacaea said, well, while there's no cure for lupus, current treatment focuses on improving quality of life, controlling the symptoms and minimizing flare-ups, drug use. This begins with lifestyle modifications, including protection from the sun. Okay. I don't think any of us are shocked by that. They recommended that lupus patients stay out of the sun. Yet sunlight was the only proven thing to reverse it. Their conditions were enabled in part by sunlight deficiency. I must, I have a thought here. Man says that, that, um, that sunlight is bad and that we have to stay out of it and that lupus will not be cured by it. Well, we know that's a lie because God said sunlight's good. It's that simple. All right, every single one of Dr. Rollier's patients arrived sensitive to the sunlight. TB, lupus, et cetera, et cetera, it was all the same soup. And yes, there is more than one type of lupus, but no matter what label are attached to the numberless illnesses, diseases, Disease is caused by the violation of God's natural law. Obeying those laws prevent and reverse disease. And God has embedded our health care into nature, including the sunlight. We do not overcome so-called sun sensitivities by avoiding sunlight. That is a doctrine of devils. We deal with the cause of the negative reactions, and sunlight is not the cause. My next presentation talks about the cause. All right, the solution was so simple. Dr. Rollier simply placed his patients on an anti-toxic vegetarian diet and introduced his patients to sunlight very, very slowly. A small amount of skin exposed for a short amount of time and take it from there. <clears throat> Dr. Rollier's sunbathing protocol is shown in detail in one of my other presentations called Practical Sunlight Therapy. That's that's not actually written yet, but it's, it's there to... Anyway, it's not written yet. Okay. Ankylosis. Ankylosis is an abnormal stiffening and immobility of a joint due to fusion of the bones. This is, this is ankylosing spondylitis, ankylosis of the spine. Notice the healthy spine followed by inflammation of joints followed by fusion of bones or called bamboo spine. How does that get fixed? He makes an observation, Dr. Ruler. He says, just as ankylosis follows the complete exclusion of light by plaster of Paris casts, so does the return of mobility follow the sun cure. This is why Dr. Ruller quickly changed to metal frame orthopedic devices that allowed sunlight to reach the body. The lesson here for us is that we cannot afford to be constantly clothed in darkness either. If we continue to live a lifestyle of darkness, our joints will ankylose, our muscles atrophy, our strength diminish, our food won't metabolize as well, our immune systems will weaken, our skin circulation will diminish, causing cold hands, feet, and limbs, which in turn will cause our heart to have to work harder, which weakens the heart and health and our internal organs become, <laughs> excuse me, become dangerously and chronically congested. We need to find a private space for regular sunbathing. This is Dr. Rollier speaking. He says, the sun cure is the best treatment for preserving the mobility of the joint. By the way, ankylosis is a very, very serious, awful condition. 
He says, we have seen even old ankylosis of the shoulder, elbow, wrist, hip, foot, and even the knee yield to this treatment with recovery of partial or complete joint function. Do we understand what, we, what, what was just revealed here? Sunlight can accurately separate joints and bones that have been fused together. How does sunlight know how to do that? God said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I believe it. We had a patient at a lifestyle center I used to work at. I worked at several of them. The patient had a debilitating case of ankylosing spondylitis. Had we known about the Laysan sun cure then and started the patient on consistent full body sunlight, that patient may very well have recovered and may never have needed his eventual joint replacements. We were all under the false idea that 15 minutes per day of sunlight to hands and face was all that was needed to remain healthy and to recover health. That was a lie. The results at Laysan were not accomplished with 15 minutes a day to hands and face. The list of just the categories of today's drug options to treat ankylosis is too long to list here. Sunlight replaces them all. If a patient would just trust God's healing provisions and take the time required. The next three slides are the most amazing of all. And we're almost done here. Dr. Rollier speaking. He says, sunlight in both rickets and tuberculosis has an indisputably, re what? An indisputably recalcifying action on the bones? No. Let's keep reading. It's most evident in a collection of more than 50,000 x-rays, which we possess. In many cases, for example, where the head of the femur, that's a large bone in your leg, where the head of the femur has almost disappeared, the reconstitution of the bone is so complete that one may, without exaggeration, term it restoration to original condition. Did we just read this? That is a this is magnificent life altering news. Think of how different our medical work can be with this understanding. Think of the practical application for true medical missionaries. Think of the surgery, suffering, drugs, and debt avoided by getting out in God's healing sunlight, recalcifying, reconstituting, worn away bones. <laughs> it's fabulous. All right. A 30-year condition of arthritis of the knee with bulky fungus, the structure is completely erased. The second image, cured in 10 months, notice the sharp outlines of the bones. These don't even look like the same bones, bone pieces here. Sunlight reconstituted worn down bones correctly. The bones in the first image are so diminished in density that parts of the bones seem to be transparent to x-ray. The first image, the right shoulder arthritis, partial destruction of the head of that bone, pronounced humerus atrophy. Look at how thin that bone is compared to the next one which is the same, same arm, healed in 18 months, reconstitution of the head, recalcification of the humerus. And these are patients that lie in bed all day. These aren't farmers. Has, has any modern day medical professional told us anything like this ever? This is fabulous news. Do you understand what this means? It means we may not have to have joint replacement surgeries. If we would only trust in God's provisions for his healing. God has made provisions for the terrible emergencies of disease, even this. Didn't I tell you that God would be showing us the escape routes away from pharmaceuticals, supplements, and even surgeries? And this is just a tiny little tip of the iceberg. So let's review. Reverse swelling and inflammation 
boosted overall health and vitality, dried up recalcitrant open sores, increased resistance to disease, relieved pain, even nerve pain. Sunlight prevented coughs and colds. It disinfected wounds. Sunlight cured incurable TB, a multi-generational disease. It reversed paralysis. Sunlight made up for poor diet. Sunlight made, excuse me, acted as a catalyst for nutrient absorption. <clears throat> Sunlight reversed osteoporosis. Sunlight straightened rickety bones. Sunlight regrew worn away bones. Sunlight healed broken bones. Sunlight strengthened and toned muscles without exercise, even when bedridden. And sunlight accurately separated fused joints and, bo and bones. And that's just a small fraction of what sunlight can do. And now, <clears throat> We are beginning to understand why God pronounced woe on those who call God's light darkness and darkness light, who condemn as evil that which God has pronounced as good. Yet those of us who see the beautiful truth of what sunlight can actually do may in awe ask the question, what hath God wrought? And what is man that thou art mindful of him? For we have a God in Israel who is mighty to save, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And it is he that healeth thee. And the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Thank you very much, Brother John. Nice information, you know, encouraging again um, to know that a lot of the remedies that are provided to us, a lot of the times they are free. Um, like last time we were talking about hydrotherapy last week. And again, one of those things that is completely, well, almost completely free, but, you know, helps so much. So, yeah, thank you so much again for sharing. Sure. Um, so before we move forward, we move on with the questions, just yeah, want to quickly remind everyone and everyone is actually on YouTube, they have joined us on YouTube. So ask your questions on YouTube in the live um, chat section and uh, brother John, I think has a bit of time to address those questions. Is that right? Yes, I do. I'm going to close this window. Okay. Too cold. Okay. Yeah, so I, um, I definitely found it fascinating. And um, as you were talking, Brother John, I just remembered I have had a few people approach me saying that um, someone has, um, has a fractured bone that is not healing for a while. And I guess I did recommend a few healing methods. Um, the comfrey cream and um, you know turmeric or curcumin extract to help with the inflammation and in case it's not just that the, the fractured bone so um, what you're saying is that uh, probably combined with lifestyle as well and diet that could actually sun sun cure is something that can actually help with that yes it's uh god has I used to, a long time ago, I used to, well, there's one way that God has provided for healing. No, 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 no. He has redundant overlapping backup systems. And uh, and when we use them together, they all work synergistically, enhancing each other's abilities. So the more we can use, the better. Um, and it is time in our Earth's history where we have to learn how to wield this stuff. Compare our puzzle pieces that God has given and start making a structured movement towards this, away from the pharmaceuticals. And the world is paying attention to this now. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I know that in other presentations, I have listened to um, your other presentations, you, you're talking about earthing and grounding as well. And that's, again, one of those things that can be combined with uh, sun treatment, right? Yes, I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't know where you were on that. But uh, some <laughs> Adventists or well-meaning Christians freak out with the name earthing, uh, grounding. Oh, that sounds like new age. Which I'm not going to have anything to do with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
True. Um, it, it can it can sound like that. That's that's probably because the new age is catching up with what um, you know God's healing methods are. It's just probably not used in um, in harmony with um, you know God's will. But it's still God still is the one that has created the earth, and He created Adam out of the earth as well. So uh, we can't get away from that. Yeah. Yes, it's true. I highly recommend the grounding thing too. Um, yeah. I use it here as well every night. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm about to move outside, at least at night, in a tent to get fresh air all the time and uh, be grounded while I'm out there as well. Yeah, you talked about fresh air as well combined with sunlight and it is um, it is important. I think we forget sometimes how long we are indoors. Um, so definitely, um, I'm hoping to learn more about grounding as well um, in in future presentations. Um, <clears throat> but um, you were also talking about, uh, brother, you were talking about exercise and diet as well with the um, with the sun cure. So you said they were using anti toxic veget anti toxic vegetarian diet. So do you know what what diet was recommending um, recommended with the treatment with the sun treatment? Yes, I skipped over that slide for the sake of time. Mm. Uh, Dr. Kellogg uh, said it was what he meant by an anti toxic diet is just uh, food fresh from the garden uh, where man hasn't touched it, processed stuff, no animal. He especially said vegetarian diet no meat because when you're sick your liver and kidneys are already struggling badly so mm -hmm. we don't need meat or animal products to make things worse mm -hmm. true true that is that is important to mention i guess uh, avoid all things that are bad and incorporate the things that that are good um okay well thank you for that and um the question about ozone layer. I have heard many years ago, I, I live in Queensland in Australia, and many years ago I have heard that the ozone layer was damaged and you have to be careful and all of that, and especially the fairer the skin, the more careful you need to be. So um, what do you, what is your opinion on the damaged ozone layer and how that can affect I uh, I addressed that in the in the next presentation you're going to he hear. Um, mm -hmm. It's called Cancer and God's Healing Sunlight. Um, I address all those myths, the myths that the uh, that the ozone layer is causing problems. Well, mm -hmm. it's a myth. It's just another lie. And I actually show the scientific study about it in that presentation. I don't have it memorized. Yeah, no worries. Well, we're looking forward to that. So um, we have, I've just, I'm just saying that God has, no, the world has found so many ways to lie about sunlight. That is a big endorsement for the value of sunlight. Mm, that is true. And I guess if we don't use that method, which is free, uh, then they have other alternatives as to what we need to use to stay away from cancer and how to prevent cancer and everything. And one of those things is baking the sunscreen on the screen, uh, on the skin that I find that is <laughs> recommended, the sunscreen. But um, yeah, I always I always had an issue with baking that on the on the skin, also because we don't know the ingredients, right? A lot of time a lot of the times it they've got very toxic ingredients. Oh yeah, toxic ingredients. Yeah, I've got a study in the next presentation yeah. on the, on the use of uh, of um, she, oh, wow, it just went away. What was sunscreen? Yes, sunscreen, and it was a study uh, in Australia. At that, uh, they had a big old push. I'm doing this by memory. The government did, and and the pharmaceuticals had a big old push to push sunscreen. Mm -hmm. And over the years, the the more in the graph, the higher, the more use of sunscreen, the higher the development of cancer. They followed each other, those two lines. Wow. I think there was also a study that included high brim, um, the wide brim hats. 
that that also didn't contribute to health but the opposite i think the more they use the wide brim hats um to protect from the sun the more again uh, the the cases of skin cancer rose interesting i i hadn't heard that before it makes sense but i do have a a thing from one of our ancient forefathers you know socrates or something that not socrates but forefather of medicine or something and uh, they found that, oh, it's hard to do. Uh, I don't have that one memorized either. Basically, he found a, a collection of skulls and skeletons from a battle. One was from Egyptians. One was from some other country, I forget. But the Egyptians didn't wear anything on their hair, on their head. And they actually had um, they shaved their hair a lot, too. But... The other group, whatever it was, Turkey or something, they wore their turbines on their head all the time. Those that had the turbines had very, very thin, fragile skulls. You could just break it with a pebble, um, you know, a line on the ground. But the Egyptians, their skulls were thick because they always had the sun on it and it grew the bones like we've just shown. It grows bones. Wow. That's incredible. Um, so one of the viewers, one of our viewers is asking about um, whether you spoke on on vitamin D or not. And she's also asking, what do you do in winter time? Uh, I'll address one at one at a time. I don't address vitamin D for several reasons because it's a concentrate. It's not natural. No, get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. It's been shown to work. And it does help, yes. Uh, but soon we won't have access to those with what's happening in the world. Yes. And on top of that, I've seen it. I've seen it happening. It's in the news that pharmaceutical companies are buying up all the supplement companies. You understand what that means? Mm. It means that they can place whatever hidden payload in those supplements that they want, or they can make supplements go away. I'm thinking they're gonna use them to put stuff in. So one way or another, when we lose access to buying and selling, we're not gonna have, we're not gonna be dependent upon those things. I mean, because we can't, we won't have them. So we have to now start weaning ourselves from them, even though they have good, good things about them, but they're still a concentrate. They've still been distorted and taken out of their, God designed delivery system. In the long run, uh, there's studies that are showing it's hurting, but we do what we can in our imperfect world as we can. Um, we are told to ask God, if we're, we're sick on a certain thing, we ask God, Lord, what is within my reach that will help this problem? And we've been promised that he will tell us. So I don't have a lot against vitamin D. It can work, but mm. we're not going to have it very much longer. That's or at true. least it won't be safe. Well, during and what was the other part of that question? What oh, what two? do you do in wintertime? Wintertime. Well, the ideal, the ideal is to prep for wintertime by sunbathing during the warm months and getting a tan. That will produce all the vitamin D you need to carry you through the winter. And there's more to that, but yeah. And if you haven't prepared, there are such things as tanning beds and sun lamps. Um, I would also suggest that you use what is in the hand and the, the winter time curing agent that God has prepared is cold air. And sometimes cold air is what's needed. If you're sick in the wintertime, you keep your windows open. Isn't that a hard thing to say? <laughs> Crack your windows open, keep yourself warm, but fresh air is curative in ways that we're only beginning to understand. The opposite of what we're told. <laughs> Always opposite of what we've been told, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it is good to learn. I think even Ellen White addressed that one time. She wrote that there is hardly any condition that can be exacerbated by the by the use of fresh air and she was also talking about exercise you can't really um 
do much damage with exercise of course you you can if you overdo it but lack of movement is usually what um makes things worse and lack yes. of fresh air yeah she said that it's better to wear out than rust out remember that statement mm, no. rust out is just inactivity it's very mm -hmm. dangerous inactivity we office workers etc yes that's true we have to make more of an effort the next question is with sunlight is there anything we know it's good but is there anything that um, is there like certain amount or certain times of the day that we need to stay away from the sun or it's good always it depends on how toxic your body is mm. that's all it depends on how toxic your body is and if you're used to sunlight um, we're all differently in one, in my cancer presentation, I show, demonstrate, it's clear that, uh, <clears throat> sunburn isn't a sunburn. It's a chemical burn, yeah. uh, from chemicals that are in our bodies that shouldn't be there that cause a negative reaction. Because long ago, when ultraviolet light was first isolated, discovered, they experimented with, and they found that ultraviolet light reacts badly with certain chemicals, especially the ones that man made. And so they called it chemical rays. And mm -hmm. so what we're experiencing when we sunburn is chemical reactions. The sun is not the problem because people have cleared up their, have, have stopped burning in the sun when they cleaned up their chemical dump within their bodies. I'm not sure I actually answered your question directly. Mm. Yeah, so what you're saying is that there is not really such a thing as like, we should stay away from the sun, but it's more about why, why we burn. <laughs> well, yeah, in other words, in other words, you can get all the sunlight you want, as long as you are you've cleaned out, you have a clean diet, you've detoxified, et cetera. If you've got mercury in you, it's going to cause problems, et cetera, mm. et cetera. So the form, there is no one particular form because formula, because everybody's got different levels of toxins in them, et cetera. Uh, even, even uh, fair skinned Irish girls don't burn anymore once they clean up their diet. And I've, I tell that in the cancer presentation. Mm -hmm. And I, I went through eleven uh, through an eleven day health program in Battle Creek, and I discovered the same thing. I wasn't burning. In, in within eleven days, within eleven days, I wasn't burning anymore in the sunlight because mm -hmm. I stopped eating all the junk. Yeah, that's true. I actually have a relative that used to tell me when they first moved to Australia, they tried to tan and they would just go red and burn but now they have a good tan and i think i i also know that they have changed their diet as well so it could be yeah that could yes. be linked as, as you said i have yeah i have definitely seen that happen and they have fair skin so yeah, yeah. But to add that answer finish answering that other question um if you're wondering how much sunlight to get, you start small, just a, a little bit of your body for a short amount of time, see what happens, and then just keep increasing, increasing, um, just like uh, Dr. Rollier did with for his patients. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, with the scoliosis as well, uh, Brother John Wood, I, I mean, that we are told that it is, um, you know, it has happened probably when you're a teenager, it, it won't change, it probably won't get worse and won't get better. The, the curvature in the spine, is it, is it something that um, can be reversed, do you think, with um, the remedies that we are discussing now, or it's just permanent? I don't believe it's permanent. Excuse me, let, let me back up. I'm not an expert on that. I have one little story that I never story that I never was able to verify. It was very little, but a man in Jamaica told a story of a woman who was bent over. She'd worked in a factory for years and years and years in the you know in the dark. There's no sunlight, and she you know was hunched over because mm. uh, that was what happened to her spine. Um, she was never getting any sunlight, so she for whatever reason started working in her garden more and more and more. 
And the story was that the spine just started straightening up. She started straightening out. I've never had that verified, mm. but that's all I've got on that one. True. Yeah. I, I don't think we will, it will do much harm if we try it anyways, right? If anyone yes. is, <laughs> I know people suffer from scoliosis and I've got a curve in my spine as well that I've been told it just won't go away. You can just strengthen the muscles to form like a corset around um um uh, around the spine but otherwise yeah it's not something that will go away completely um but i would i would like to see what benefit it will have you know the constant sun exposure um okay so um you were saying as well um you were saying as well brother john that in the morning is probably the most beneficial for healing um, in the sun cure clinics where they're using the morning sunlight is that the, the most beneficial time to be out in the sun uh according to dr rollier yes and they postulated it was because of the contrast between the, the night and the immediate day when they got them out in the sunlight mm -hmm. um, okay. uh, there's there's benefits i mean god has the sun moving constantly so there is no one ideal time always change everything in the body everything in the world everything is always changing 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 so one formula for all mm, there's there's advantages if you want if you do it in the heat and disadvantages in you do it the advantages is that the uv is more effective when your skin is warm or hot uh, the disadvantage is that you get a depressive effect on the body, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's advantages in the morning and it's easier to do. Mm -hmm. That's true. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the next um, session as well with uh, cancer. It seems like all the questions we have, um, yeah. you are going to address them anyway. So yes. Um, okay. So if, no one has any more questions or um, we are nearing the end of our stream. If we don't have any more questions, then um, we can just um, thank you again, Brother John, for the time that you spent to share. Uh, we were very blessed and um, we are looking forward to next Sunday, 10 a.m. again, our time, Queensland um, time in Australia. So, um, yeah, if we can ask you to close with a word of prayer, that would be great. Okay. Lord, Father, you are truly magnificent. You are the God that heals us, and we, we are seeing you move in this direction to bring us all back to your methods. We ask for the Spirit of God to be with us to introduce these thoughts, introduce people back to God's healing methods. We thank you for your great care for us, sir. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much again and looking forward to seeing you next week. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. God bless. See you. Okay. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us um, this morning. We just want to remind you that if you have any questions, again, we are happy to answer them if you send them to us at techchargeofyourhealth101 at, at gmail.com. And uh, whether the questions are for us or for our future speakers or from, pre or from previous presentations, we're happy to answer them. If you want to be part of our online community and receive notifications and updates on up upcoming presentations and events, you can... Um, subscribe to our YouTube and Rumble channels and send us an email requesting to be in our mailing list, uh, list and we will keep you updated. Um, we apologize again for the confusion today with Zoom and StreamYard and the YouTube link. Um, we will, with uh, Brother John Everblessed, we will probably have these meetings on Zoom, so watch out for those. And if you want to be in our signal group as well, let us know. Again, email us and um, we will send you a link to, to join our signal group. So thank you very much um, for your support, for your prayers, and we will see you next time. Bye now.